Hello and welcome. I am your host, Dr. Sigmund Freud, and I'm here today to talk about comic strips. Comic strips, unlike other communication forms, particularly those in art, is different in that unlike a picture, like the one behind us here, it is not a single static image, but a series of images that are meant to be read sequentially. So comic books are thought of as sequential art that are character driven, designed to tell the story. In that way, they are kind of a fusion between art and narrative. Let's look at some examples to begin to understand what they are, why they are, and look, here they are. The first comic, we're going to, comic strip we're going to look at is from Kelvin and Hobbes, a very popular strip. You may, have, you may have seen it. Notice in this strip, just like many others, there are uh, characters that are obviously evident. There are boxes called panels. There are backgrounds that are meant to supply further information. There are speech bubbles, and even though these don't have bubbles around them, uh, you understand how those work. That is the character speaking. If there is a, if the bubbles are more of a cloudy shape, they are thought of called thought bubbles. And there are also in some comics voiceovers. Additionally, if you look at the bottom of this uh, comic strip, you can see when uh, the one character's face looks like it's exploding with eyeballs coming out, that sort of uh, technique is called emanata, coming from the verb emanate. And so the idea here is that the images themselves are emanating either sound effects or sight effects. In addition to the words and the pictures, notice the use of what's called the blank or negative space. Cartoonists use that to balance out their uh, balance out the view, the, the way the scene is depicted for a more balanced appearance. In addition, notice that between the panels, there is this blank space, this rather narrow channel that is called the gutter. And the gutter is used to, to allow for lapses of time. And the, the readers are supposed to figure out what happened between the two panels. Similarly, notice that the image changes, from, changes perspective. They call this the camera angle, or changing the point of view in order to keep the style of the strips varied. Finally, you can think, look at this comic and compare to others and put them all on a spectrum. And you can think about them as some being more simple more, and others being more complex, some being more minimal, others being more maximal. And finally, others having much dependent much more on image, while some are much more dependent on text. So let's look at some of these comics and see the differences. In this comic, you can see that at the, uh, up at the first panel, there is a figure hiding underneath a blanket. And because there's the tail sticking out, we know that to be Hobbes, the uh, Calvin's stuffed animal friend who comes alive when only Hobbes is around, when, when only Calvin is around. Uh, Calvin is heading away under the blanket, heading for something at the, uh, in the next panel, and then moves to hiding under a cushion on the chair. Calvin is exiting the school box, obviously on his way home. Calvin says something to the effect of, oh, I'll bet Hobbes is waiting for me at the front door. I'll go around back. That way I can surprise him. And then he says, snuck in the back way, and you can see him peeking out behind the uh, wall there. And he's sneaking up uh, behind Hobbes in order to surprise him. And then in this next panel, he shouts, in, uh, in order to startle Hobbes, he says, I'm home, and look at all the emanata coming out of Hobbes's face. And then, in an interesting lapse of time, uh, through the, past the gutter, you can look real close, you can see, that Calvin has us all darkened and scratched up with stars coming out of his backside, and obviously the implication here is that uh, Hobbes attacked him in retaliation for being shocked. Uh, notice in this, uh, in this cartoon, you have figures with large eyes and there's bright coloration, all indicative of lightheartedness. Other cartoons take different approaches. Let's look at one now. In this next cartoon, this one is called Rusty Brown by, uh, local artist Chris Ware. We can see a typical school scene. 
there's a teacher and there's some students. Notice here that while there are bright colors, they're much more muted than in Kelvin and Hobbes. And unlike the large eyes of the Kelvin and Hobbes characters, the eyes here are very small. This more somber uh, tone creates in the reader a different mood, a mood of more that is more contemplative. Note here, there is relatively little movement. The characters are generally uh, still, and uh, sometimes they have uh, thought, sometimes they have thought bubbles, and you hear, yeah, you see emanata, and sometimes, as on this page, you can see there's just something that looks almost like a painting. And so the style of these cartoons are much more contemplative, uh, much quieter and slower in their exposition. Uh, it's a different approach. Now let's look at some others. Oops, I've fallen over. I knew I shouldn't have had that schnapps. I'm back. Okay, in this next cartoon, here we have a cartoon version of the uh, famous play by Christopher Marlowe, who is a contemporary of Shakespeare's Dr. Faustus. And in this cartoon, they've updated the play and set it in the late 20th century. Let's have a look. Notice these panels have a very glossy appearance, almost as if they were painted as, uh, painted as oil paintings. So here's a very lush presentation, which, makes, which is very arresting for the eye. Uh, it's visually impactful, and the thinking might be that it's easier to read something that is difficult, as language that is 400 years old might be, if the pictures that, that uh, accompany it are very eye-catching and uh, magnetic. So that is another example. Here's a comic book that came out not long after pres former President Obama was elected. Here he appears in a Spider-Man comic book. Let's see what's, what he and Spidey are up to. Uh-oh, it looks like there are two Obamas. That must mean that evildoer chameleon is afoot. Let's see how they get out of this fix. In this panel, chameleon uh, ex is exposed and uh, in the climax of the scene, you can see Spider-Man punching Chameleon and saying, you hear that Chameleon? Uh, what does he say? The president-elect just appointed me secretary of you shutting up. And you can see the emanata coming out of the Chameleon's face in the form of some weird lavender sort of uh, blood looking there. So, good job, Spidey, saving President Obama. And then in the last panel, you can see Spider-Man saying, It looks like Washington is in capable hands. <laughs> oh, that's funny. And then finally, I have one more comic to show you. Uh, I drew this comic myself. I hope you like it. In the first panel, you can see some weird puppeteer guy with a mask on his face holding two puppets. And one of the puppets says, the rainstorm symboli is symbolic of a low pressure zone. And the other puppet, which seems to be some sort of unicorn says, the use of understatement is... And then in the next panel, notice how the point of view zooms out and you realize that the puppeteer actually is a puppet himself of some sort of malevolent looking octopus there. And the, and the one character says, still, blah, blah, reality is just a socially agreed upon construct. And the other character says, blah, blah, irony, blah, blah. And then the next panel, the evil octopus is registering some sort of surprise. While the characters continue their conversation, one character says, author's choice, blah. And the other character says, universe sculpted for justice, blah. Now, there's going to be uh, one more panel. And we zoom out once again, and we see that the evil octopus is actually himself a puppet. 
But wait, is there a final twist? It looks like it, because the puppeteer has that same question mark over his head. What could it mean? What could it mean? And so there's a little bit about cartoons to help you uh, analyze them. And we'll be talking to you again next time on e-learning. Stay safe. Avoid those germs. Bye, everybody.